In this video, we're going to be analyzing the investment strategy called averaging down, which is the investment strategy that I follow for investing in my ETFs. We're going to be looking at what exactly it is, why and when it's useful, but as well as that, we're going to be looking at why and when it might not be so useful and why it might not be the right investment strategy for you. Spoiler alert, there is no silver bullet. There's no fail safe investment strategy. For each and every strategy, there's a whole bunch of critics out there which can provide examples of why it won't work. Not every strategy works for everybody. The aim of this video is to give you a baseline understanding of what the averaging down investment strategy is so that you can pick it apart and choose the parts which work for you and which ones don't. It'll help you formulate a strategy of your own. So like I mentioned, I use an averaging down strategy. This is like dollar cost averaging, but on steroids. Now, if you don't know what dollar cost averaging is, it's basically where you invest the same amount of money every single month, no matter what is happening with the market. And the result over the long term is that you realize that average market gains. Now, this is a really, really popular strategy. And because of its simplicity, it's been explained time and time again here on YouTube. I don't feel like I can add anything or in fact do a better job at explaining it. So I'm not going to. I'll leave a link in the description to a video which I think explains dollar cost averaging really well. So if the dollar cost averaging approach invests the same amount of money every single month, then how much does the averaging down investment strategy invest each month? Well, the strategy is actually part of the contrarian approach to investing. All that means is that it goes against the prevailing trends of investments. It's a strategy that tries to follow the well-known advice of buy low, sell high. To put it simply, I follow a dollar cost averaging approach where I'm investing the same amount of money every single month. If, however, the value of the ETF drops, then I will increase the amount I've invested that month. To measure the value drop and to create a formula, I use a simple moving average. Specifically, I use a 20 day simple moving average. If the value of the investment drops beneath this moving average, then I will increase the amount I'm investing that month by 15 to 20%. As an example, I invest in the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF, VUSA, with around 300 pound once a month. When the ETF is below the 20 day moving average, then I'll add an extra 20%, which is about 60 pound that month. I do this with all of my core ETFs, and if the ETF is above the 20 day moving average on the day that my auto investments are set to be made, then I won't add the extra amount and I'll just leave it as investing the £300. A really, really useful tool for tracking where an ETF is, or a stock for that matter, in relation to its moving average is through a website called Wallmine. This isn't sponsored or anything, it's just a tool that I find really, really useful and saves me time, and so I think that you might be interested in it too. You can add your portfolio onto here and you can use it to monitor the 20 day, the 50 day and the 200 day simple moving average. If you don't know how to read the candlesticks, don't worry, I know they look a bit complex, but it's super simple to be honest. It's just a difference between the open price and the closed price for that day. If it's green, it means good. It's higher than it opened. I'll leave a link in the description below to Wallmine. It's not an affiliate or anything like that. It's completely free. It's just a super useful tool. You can input all the ETFs so you can create your own portfolio on there. And it works out a lot of the metrics for you and just allows you to keep an eye on those moving averages. The averaging down strategy is really useful if you meet two criteria. Firstly, if you're young and you have a long term investment horizon ahead of you. That's just because the baseline of the strategy is a dollar cost averaging approach. You're investing the same amount of money every single month and really trying to realize the long term benefits of compounding. Secondly, you need a long term horizon just because when the ETF is falling in value, you're actually putting more money into that ETF. That means that you need a long term horizon just to make sure that the ETF actually does recover in value. And that's the second criteria. I only follow this strategy for my core ETFs. These are the ones that are well diversified, have stood the test of time, and have proved to provide long-term gains. Ultimately, for this strategy to work, the investment has to recover in value. Otherwise, it's just like jumping onto a ship once it's hit an iceberg and started to sink. This brings us on to when it's not so useful. If you Google averaging down strategies, you can see that there are a ton of debate surrounding the strategy. The reason being is that if the investment continues to decline, then the losses are magnified. This is why, as I mentioned, I only use this strategy for my core and broad ETFs. Using this investment strategy for stocks or even for those smaller ETFs which just track a handful of companies is inherently risky. That's just because they're more likely to struggle to recover from a loss 
and they face a high risk of insolvency. If you're the type of investor that likes to track individual stocks or uses these smaller niche ETFs, then this investment strategy probably isn't right for you. You also need to watch out for those meddling dealing charges. If you're following a dollar cost averaging approach, then the dealing fee is usually a lot cheaper if you've got some sort of automatic payment, some sort of direct debit set up. If you get charged a lot more for individual investments, then it might not be worth following a strategy like this because most of the money is just going straight to the broker. This all depends on the broker that you're using. If you're using a broker which doesn't charge a dealing fee, or even if you're using a broker which just charges a set percentage of each investment, then this is absolutely fine. This is a perfect place to follow a strategy like this. If, however, you're using a broker which charges a set amount for each investment, say, for example, £15 for investment, then it might not be worth following a strategy like this since so much of the money is just going to the broker in fees depending on how much you're looking to invest extra each month. This strategy also falls down if you're not a long-term buy and hold investor. If you're frequently trading, or even if you're just not particularly holding any ETF for a length of time, then this investment strategy or dollar cost averaging probably isn't right for you because you're more susceptible to short-term changes in the price. So averaging down clearly isn't right for everybody. And thankfully, there are a whole host of different strategies out there. Personally, I'm particularly interested in formula investing, as it removes all of that human bias that we each have ingrained inside us. A really interesting one that I saw was by a fixed income strategy investor, where they were taking, I think, the top 20 or top 50 dividend yielding companies. As soon as the dividend yields shrank, they would be removed from the portfolio and they'd be replaced by the company with the next largest dividend yield. So they always had the companies with the highest yields in their portfolio. There's also some really, really cool stuff with using AI and machine learning, creating neural nets to try and predict the prices and pick stocks. This, of course, is under development, but it's definitely a really interesting place to keep an eye on. On the channel, I'm going to be exploring different approaches and different strategies just like this one in between the ETF reviews that I'm doing every other week. If you're following a strategy that's particularly interesting, then leave a comment below and I'll make a video weighing up the pros and cons of it just like this one. I'm genuinely interested to try and learn more about strategies and I want to see what's out there so I can either modify my own strategy or ditch it altogether for something better. 